Welcome to note set number 12 and uh, yes uh, as I mentioned in the last video um, we are doing the Fourier transform table results in in this set of notes so the idea is that um, somebody's already found a bunch of these Fourier transforms for us there's no sense in us um, having to redo all of that work um, and these are done for common textbook signals um, and you know those are nice to help us work homework problems but for the most part uh, it helps us understand what kinds of signals um, give uh, what types of Fourier transforms so it builds kind of a uh, an ability to understand um, what drives a certain type of Fourier transform uh, and it also helps us um, develop you know the tools that we need to uh, to think carefully about how Fourier transforms and systems and signals all work so um, the the table is provided on on my web page and uh, you know um, you can you can look at it there um, and, and what you ought to do is study this table so because uh, you're going to need to be able to recognize um, the things on this table it's not like I'm just going to tell you use the third entry um, you're going to need to be aware of what is available to you on the table so that when it crops up in a problem you'll be able to recognize it and it helps to um, understand what the table provides both um, from a, an equation point of view as well as from more of a pictorial point point of view um, so I don't provide the pictures for you uh, so you should be doing a little bit of work on, on that on your own to um, to understand what these things look like um, so this result we found already that is on the table um, and there's some other ones um, so as I was saying you should be able to recognize these in graphical form as well as in uh, equation form uh, and the table also includes Fourier transform properties and um, we'll talk about those later on um, that might be the next lecture um, but I'm not sure um, and so those properties will um, expand um, what you can do with your Fourier transform table as well as provide insight into how Fourier transforms work in general um, so you know real-world engineers even though um, uh, most of these entries on the table are kind of textbook problems um, these tables help us to understand um, how things work and, and you know the basic uh, understanding of, of ideas and so forth so uh, let's take a look so here's an example um, this signal is a decaying exponential uh, shows up all over the place um, you should be familiar with this from uh, differential equations um, you s must have seen decaying exponentials there as solutions of homogeneous differential equations um, and you've probably also seen exponentials in RC circuit studies um, and that's no accident RC circuit is just a differential equation uh, waiting to happen so to speak so anyway um, the way we have it set up here we've got a negative sign out in front and so if we restrict ourselves to positive B's um, then we get decay so B greater than uh, zero here um, controls our, our decay uh, and the faster uh, the larger B is the faster it decays if we let B equal to zero well it doesn't decay at all it stays flat because then we'd have um, e to the zero which is one times the unit step um, so the role of the unit step here is to um, keep this thing at zero obviously without the unit step just the E to the minus BT continues up exponentially um, but the unit step sets that to zero so that um, goes like that okay so um, we can drive this result and in fact I would encourage you to try to derive this result for yourself um, but even more importantly to be able to recognize um, you know what this means so this is one of the results on the table and so it's telling us that the Fourier transform of this signal this decaying exponential looks like this so we see it is complex valued 
and we notice that it's in the form of a rectangular number over a rectangular form um, and so we can find the magnitude of that we need to find magnitude of the top over the magnitude of the bottom um, magnitude of the top is just one magnitude of the bottom square root of b squared plus omega squared and so yes there indeed it is um, and then we need to find the angle uh, so the, the or the phase so the phase is the angle of the top so the angle of one minus the angle of b plus j omega so the angle of one is zero minus inverse tangent of omega over b so that zero goes away and we have the negative inverse tangent. So there's how um, how we were, would find such a thing uh, to find the magnitude and phase of this thing. But uh, you know, let's take a look at this plotting of this magnitude. Um, it's going to look something like this, where it decays down at higher frequencies, but it decays with a very specific structure. Um, and as we let um, as we let uh, B um, get bigger and this thing decays really fast, um, so if this thing decays down uh, much faster, uh, we will find that this thing actually expands outward. Um, and, uh, um, well, actually, um, it goes lower like this, but expands uh, quite a bit further out. So we'll. we'll um, you know, looking at how the effect of B changes this plot is, is uh, provides some really good insight. Um, so here's a, a, a more uh, detailed, um, technically correct MATLAB plot um, for this Fourier transform. And so you can see what the, the magnitude and phase looks like. Uh, again, we're noting that the magnitude has even symmetry phase plot has odd symmetry <clears throat> and it's quite common for the phases at positive frequencies to be negative <clears throat> not always but that that's quite common uh, if you're interested in how I plotted that there's the MATLAB commands to generate the signal um, and then there's the MATLAB commands to plot so to plot magnitudes notice that we've got an ABS that's absolute value uh, and to plot the phase, we've got a command angle. Um, so we didn't really need to um, have that nice square root form for the magnitude. We could just compute this uh, in MATLAB and then uh, use the ABS. Um, and just you know, in passing here, uh, notice that I try to always label my um, axes with both telling what it is as well as what the units are. Um, technical plots without labels are just modern art. They're not science or technology or engineering. So let's take a look at what happens as B changes. Uh, when B is equal to 1 and we get a decay like this versus B equal to 10, decays much faster. It's so fast it's hard to actually see. Um, but notice what happens. Uh, well, first of all, uh, the scale changes, um, but more importantly, uh, we get more uh, relative content at high frequencies for something really short in the time domain. So that's a fundamental result, a big idea that short signals tend to have Fourier transforms that spread into um, much farther into the high frequencies. And all that means is that um, a signal that's very short is changing very rapidly and it needs these high frequency components to make that change happen. Um, so that's one way to think about that. Now here's a whole list of other um, transform pairs that are on the table. Um, so here we see that you know a DC signal that's you know dead flat in the time domain is a delta function at the origin in the frequency domain. So what that tells us is that all the frequency content of a DC signal is at omega equal to zero. Um, and so you can look at these and explore them and visualize what they look like. Um, here's a nice one. 
a cosine, what kinds of frequency components, now when I say frequency components, I mean complex exponentials, complex sinusoids. So what do I need to build cosine? Well, Euler tells me that what I need is an e to the j omega 0 t plus an e to the minus j omega 0 t. So I need one component, just one component at omega 0 and another component at minus omega 0. Well, I have a delta function and a delta function. What does that thing look like? Looks like that at omega 0 minus omega 0. That's telling me that I need everything concentrated at omega 0 and a contribution concentrated at minus omega 0. Similar kind of thing for sine, similar kind of thing for complex exponential, except there I only need one. So these are the kinds of things you should get used to as we go through some problems during the class session, um, as well as you know exploring these kinds of things in your outside studies. Now let's talk a little bit about the Fourier transform of a periodic signal. We just saw a Fourier transform of a sine and we saw that it had a delta function, actually two delta functions in it. Um, and we know that a periodic signal has a bunch of Fourier, um, has a bunch of sinusoids in it. So each one of those sinusoids is going to give a delta function. Um, and we know that those delta functions are going to be spaced evenly um, by um, the amount omega 0. So each one of these things is going to transform to a delta function. Um, so when we do this Fourier transform, we pass the Fourier transform through the sum. C of k is just a constant, so we pass it around there. Um, and that is just, the Fourier transform of that is just a delta function focused at k omega 0. And so there is the result the C sub k sits out in front. We're just summing up a bunch of delta functions. Um, and so there is what it would look like plotting the magnitude plot. Phase plot's a little funky on such a thing. Um, so we, for this kind of thing, we generally look at just the magnitude plot. Um, but what it's telling us is that a periodic signal is going to consist of a bunch of what we call spectral lines or spectral spikes. Um, what do we need? Uh, what does this Fourier transform tell us that we need to build this particular signal? Well, we need just discrete frequencies. We need 0, omega 0, minus omega 0, 2 omega 0, minus 2 omega 0, 3 omega 0, minus 3 omega 0, etc., etc., etc. Now, if we were to start with the trig form, amplitude phase version of that. Um, we take a Fourier transform, pass it through this sum, taking the Fourier transform of each cosine. Well, each cosine transforms to a delta function, one at plus omega, one at minus omega. We're going to get the same exact result. It doesn't really matter. Um, the only difference is these C zeros um, are going to be specified in terms of the A sub Ks. Um, but that's really nothing more than those relationships between the different forms of Fourier series that we've already seen. So uh, the, this was a quick, um, very quick exposure to the Fourier transform table. We'll be exploring this more during the um, problem sessions and uh, during our class time. Uh, so come to class prepared uh, with a Fourier transform table printed out. Uh, and uh, ready to go to try some of these things out. Thanks.